All right, to them. Welcome to the very first uh, edit and chill, or yeah, let's call it that, edit and chill. Yay! With me, Daniel Brin. And today we're going to edit one of my all-time favorite images from Africa, this image right here. The process we're going through today is basically the full editing uh, session. From importing, like I've done now, you can see here on my, on my, um, on my Lightroom, this is the starting point, and it's not really that impressive, but I absolutely love the pose of this lion that I took in uh, an undisclosed place, a secret spot in Botswana, if you want to see my, uh, my video series, when I spent six months chasing lions, photographing lions in Botswana, there is a link below or up here, I think. Anyways, love the pose, but I was a bit nervous when, when I was taking this image because this line was coming directly towards me, as you can see here, and he was very close. But that's another story. I'm going to make a video about, um, about the encounter or the story behind this photo because it really deserves to be made into a video. I've got so much footage of uh, these three lines. There were three of them actually, but this time or on this day, this guy was alone. We crop it like this, nice, and then I adjust the exposure. I think this is good. Then I can add the start base, and I have a contrast start base, and I have a soft look start base. So I'm going to go with this one, a bit more contrast. The colors, I, st I still don't like the colors, so I will put on a wildlife grade, one, two, and three. I think the first one, that's my favorite. Now I think it's starting to look like um, it's a good starting point to continue the edit. And you can see here on the presets, you can always adjust the amount of the preset as well. So this is zero, that's nothing. And that's, this is 100%, which is um, where you will start with the preset if you hit the preset and then you have 200%. That's way too much. I will go with, maybe slightly less, maybe 80% on this preset, 80% coverage, opacity, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the opacity. And we can start tweaking the colors a little bit before we head on to the local adjustments. Yes, so this will be, yeah. I'm going to adjust the, the uh, oranges and yellows, maybe take down the yellows in the background there so the lion pops more out of the image. Just like this guy popped um, into my camp that day. I was actually uh, uh, following him. It was a, a very good experience and I miscalculated how close he would get or how fast he would get close to my camp. So that's how he basically, I was sitting down making ready and I figured I had a couple of minutes to, to to set up properly, but there he was staring right at me, just as in this photo. Look at this guy, fantastic. Anyways, can we do something about the color grade here, maybe? Yeah, maybe slightly more towards the blue. Let's see here. I think this looks good. How about the calibration? I normally do the calibration just after the uh, basic adjustments, but it's part of the color grade as well, or my wildlife grade preset. Let's see here. The greens, yeah. Hmm. yeah I'm definitely going more towards the orange. I I think that looks better. And you can always hit Y as well to see the before and after. Yeah, this is much, much better. Very good. So that's, I don't want to go over the top either. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's all right. That's quite nice. Or maybe the greens should be a little bit darker as well to <clears throat> to have the um, sorry <clears throat> to have the lion stand out even more. Let's see here. 
Queens. Or lighter even. A little bit lighter. I think that looks good. Yeah, perfect. So what I'm aiming to, to achieve now is to have the line stand out more out of the picture, to pop more. So to achieve that, I'm, I'm happy with the edit for now. Maybe I'll do go back and do some small adjustments later. But let's have this guy pop out a little bit. And for that, we can go to mask and we can choose subject. And this will detect the subject perfectly. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can add up the exposure a little bit in the contrast. Yeah. But not too much either, otherwise it looks fake. And we don't want that. We want this to look real and have the line our subject pop out of the photo. Shadows, maybe. I'm not going to do too much. Let's be hit before and after. Yeah, I think this looks quite good. Now what I want to do is just brighten up the eyes a little bit. Uh, we're going to do, oh, that's way too much flow and density. So. I go to create new mask, brush, and then I take the flow and density down to about 40. I think that's good. And a little bit more feather. And I just brush around the eyes here, just to have them pop out a little bit more to get out the details in and around the eyes. Like so, and you can always go here and before and after. So it's a little bit brighter in the eyes here now. That's good. I like that. Hit before and after to see what it looks like. It looks good. Maybe I should take the brush again just on the left eye there to have it pop out a little more. Let's see. Yeah. I think that looks better. Yeah, that looks better. And final thing to do is to, I like to add a linear gradient, like this, maybe. And we can, for example, let's try and invert it first and take down the exposure like this. Look at this. Now the line really pops in my opinion. That's great, great success, yeah. Okay, nice. Oh, there's a fly there. I'm going to re remove the fly with, uh, what's it called again? Content aware remove, here, boom. I don't know if you can see this, but since we have adjusted the exposures slightly up, almost by one stop, we have some noise in the background and we don't like noise in the background. We also have some noise in the eyes here. And I think that as long as you just zoom into 100% and if it looks good, like sharp and in focus and all that, it's fine. When you zoom in 200%, you can really start seeing the, the noise in the image. Even, yeah, and this was taken with an ISO of 1000 on the Sony A1. I used to have a Sony A1. That was way over the top for me. But a great, great machine of a camera right there. Let's see here. Yeah, I think this looks nice. Um, yeah, speaking about the noise, that was uh, what I was going to say something about. And uh, we have some fantastic softwares for this. The denoise feature in Lightroom is brilliant. And I, I also use a program called Topaz because I paid for it. I made a video about that. You can check that out as well if you want to see how Good that is, but that's the last step we are going to do for this image. We are going to denoise it in Lightroom. That's uh, that it's so good. The denoise AI in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Let's see if we can do some final adjustments here. I like this. Yeah, I think it looks fine. Maybe we can add a bit of sharpening 
if we see here on the eye, but not too much either. Let's do, yeah, let's try this. Um, we're not going to use manual noise reduction. We are going to use Lightroom Denoise AI, ladies and gentlemen. You can see here, just see how good this is. Let's find the eye. There we go. Enhanced without enhance or without denoise. And this definitely fix this eye right here. Goody. And the background just, yeah, it's super nice. If you think this looks a little bit fake, you, know, you can always drag down the denoise a little bit like so. But in this case, I'm just going over the top 100%. Hit enhance. Here we go. It's going to create a DNG with uh, with the denoised photo or image. That's why I like this to be the last thing I do after local adjustments and the fine tuning of the image. Then I denoise, so I know everything else is good, so I don't have to worry about anything else. Takes a while. Takes about maybe. 15 seconds, something like that. And you can see here, we hit compare and we compare the two photos. On the left side, we have the raw file without a denoise and on the right side, we have the denoised image. Have a look at this. You can see that it's so much smoother in the background there and it preserves the details in the eyes, which is important and it sharpens up the image a little bit. Right, I think this looks good. Very nice. Let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, fine. Done with that. Now, Let's have a look at this one. This is, this is I've actually uh, done the edit on the black and white photo, but we can do that again together. So we hit, now that I have the noise, uh, denoised image, it's edited, it's good to go. I can just click on the other one or the raw file, the raw image, and we can go into develop again as, as you do, of course, hit um, black and white and you can see here the finished image oh, it's a bit it's cropped differently we have to take off the uh, the um, color grading that's going to be a reset otherwise you have this uh, tint in the shadows and highlights of whatever however you edited it so here you can see it's a bit more contrasty so that's what we are going to try and recreate. And for this, you have the black and white mix of the, um, the different colors. And you can see here, if I take, for example, the orange, I know this is uh, very, the, the, the lion is very orangey. So we can take this down just a little bit to preserve the details or to, to bring out all, all the details in the photo. The greens as well. Just going to take that more down. Yellow, yeah. If we push the yellow more to the bright side, the line just disappears into the image and we don't want that like this. I think this is a good starting point. Then again, we do the, um, we do the select subject mask and we can Bring him up a little bit, not too, I think this is too much. If we look at the thumbnail up here in the left corner, this might be a little bit too much, but if you bring down the, the highlights, I think it will be better. Shadows a little bit up and add some contrast to the image. That's good. It's going, it's closer to this one. But as you can see here, Seems like I've reversed the um, the mask, the uh, 
radial gradient mask, we can take that, maybe we can just have this go away. I don't know which one, I think I like this one better. And this is cropped differently as well. Let's just do that for fun. Is it cropped differently? No, I'm going to keep it as is. But it really doesn't matter. Today I feel like, actually feel like this is a better image. I like that you, you get such a um, good connection with this image either way because the line is staring right at you. So it doesn't really make much of a difference. Maybe this is better than this one. And let me know what you think in the comments, by the way, that would be awesome. It's a bit more contrasty in the line's face here, but I like this edit. Maybe bring up the clarity. I'm more like a minus on the clarity slider kind of guy, but uh, for this image, maybe we can go bananas and take it up to plus 15, maybe. Doesn't make that much of a diff difference, but we have better contrast here. Ooh, and here as well, we need to denoise this. So that's the final step, denoise. Just go completely mad, 100% on the denoise there. So this is black and white and this is the color photo. This is the starting point. So there you go. To summarize this video, how I do my editing process is of course, sort all the photos and select the photo I want to work with. Then I use the basic adjustments and calibration as a starting point. I have presets for that. My presets are meant as a starting point for, for continuing, continuing editing. That was a difficult word for me to say today, apparently. And then I have grade edits as well. Um, so that's what I typically use to, to start editing the photos. I, have, I know I have a good, um, good base to continue the edit and really fine tune the image. Like I said, this is one of my, my favorite photos of all time um, from Africa. I want to, I'm going to continue making these, um, these editing sessions with you here on YouTube. Let me know what you would like to see more of and if I missed something since this is basically the first, first video in this series, let me know what you would like to see and I shall certainly uh, take that, that into consideration. Alright, then. that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I see you hopefully in the next one. Bye-bye.